Hey guys, welcome to Digital Srini channel on YouTube and if you haven't already done so, I request you to please go ahead and subscribe to this channel right now. Okay, in this video, it's going to be a short video just so uh, you're happy. Uh, we're going to look at an easy way to split your data on your desk into multiple subfolders, uh, each for training, validation and then testing. Okay. And why do you want to do that? Well, most of the time we do not have enough uh, memory to load the entire data, okay, for training, for example. So we have to use data generator to go ahead and look at data in folders. Now for that, your folders need to be properly organized as uh, testing and training and uh, so on, right? So this example gives you, uh, you know, a quick way of doing that. And here you can see that, okay, uh, you have a master folder and in there you have, uh, for example, uh, dogs and cats and airplanes and so on. And you just want that cats and dogs and so on to be uh, divided into your testing, validation, and training with the same structure, right? Where you have dogs and cats and so on. Now, when it comes to semantic segmentation, the structure is a bit different. I'll talk about that in the next video to actually uh, handle uh, big data, for example. You know, if you have lots of images, how do you train that for semantic segmentation? Let's, this is basically a precursor to that video, okay? But first of all, uh, this is very easy. That's why this uh, video is going to be pretty quick and short. So we are going to use a library called split folders. You can write your own code. In fact, I, I thought of doing this video and I have written a few lines of code to split this, but then I realized this is actually an amazing uh, library that does this job for us. So why not just go ahead and use this? Okay, so the go ahead and pip install split folders. Again, I did this. Uh, no issues in para, in at least in Python 3.7, I believe that's what I'm working with. Okay, so let's jump into Spider IDE so uh, I can show you how to use this. Okay, again, don't worry. I'll share the code, that couple of lines of code that I copied from from these guys anyhow. Okay. Okay, so. Uh, before jumping into the code, what are we dealing with? So I have an example here just for binary. You can do exactly the same for any number of classes, okay? So I have a folder called cell images and uh, two subfolders. One is parasited, one is uninfected. You may actually have uh, many such subfolders depending on how many classes you are trying to classify this into, right? So I'm not talking about uh, semantic segmentation. This is for classification right now, okay? For semantic segmentation, the structure needs to be different, which I already mentioned. Let's talk about that in the next tutorial. But for now, let's uh, just go ahead and see how this tool works. For that, I have two classes here, binary classification. One is parasited, and this one originally had 16,000 images or something. I just took only the first 500. So the demonstration is a bit faster and intuitive, okay? So these are all parasited images, and I have uninfected images and a whole bunch, again, 500 of those. So I have equal amount. You can have unbalanced classes, by the way, okay? And then you can uh, enable a flag called oversample equals to true. So it kind of oversamples a little bit for the unbalanced classes, but we'll get to that in a minute. So I have a folder with parasited uninfected. That's it. I want to divide these images into training, validation, and testing. It's always very important to split these into at least a training and validation, but also uh, testing can be very useful, okay? So these images will never ever go into your training, uh, although the validation data is not used in updating the weights, okay? Now, uh, for that, I created another folder called cell images two, and here is where I want all that data to be copied to. So let's, with that information, I did uh, pip install split folders, it worked without any uh, issues. So let's go ahead and import split folders right there. Okay, so it's imported. Now let me define my input folder as cell images, right? So that's exactly what my input folder is, cell images. And from there, it's going to copy everything into cell images too. So that is my output folder. If you want, you can define that outside, but that's it. So the way you use this is split folders dot ratio or split folders dot fixed. Obviously ratio means you're saying, okay, I want 70% to be training, 20% to be validation, 10% to be testing. That's what I defined here, 70% training. The first one is training, the second one is validation, and the third one is testing. Just a quick reminder, training data is used to train, obviously, and to update the weights. Testing, uh, sorry, validation data is used as part of your training, but only to validate after each epoch and it reports the metrics. 
after each epoch using the validation data. Testing data never gets used as part of your training at all. Testing data is something we use after the training is fully completed to test the completed trained model on our test data. Ideally, the test data should come from somewhere else, but if you want to split it, you can. You can only provide only two, like 0.7 and 0.3, in which case it would be training and validation. That's it, okay? Now, so let's look at split folders dot ratio and the first argument is input folder and the next one is output folder and then a seed obviously if you want the different selection of images you can use that but uh, you need to provide a random seed i mean a seed right there and then what ratio you would like to divide that into okay and group uh, prefix i haven't used this but uh, go ahead and look at the documentation what that actually means so let's go ahead and run these lines and it should say, you see, copying 1000 files because we have 500 in each folder. So it's doing that, it's pretty quick. And if I open cell images too, now you see the three sub directory, sub folders right there. Uh, test has both parasited and infected. It has 50, right? 10% of 500, right? You have 50 right there. And then the uninfected should also have 50. Now let's go to train. Train is basically 70% of 500. What is that, 350? Yeah, 350 items right there. And uh, same with uninfected. Now, if you look at validation, you have the same structure. If you have 10, 20, 30 different classes, all that will be intact right here. Now the data will be ready for you to uh, to be you know uh, to use it in as part of uh, one of the generators. Okay, so that's pretty much it. Uh, and uh, let's go ahead and delete all of this just so I can show the second method also down here. Uh, split folders dot fixed. Fixed is basically hey I don't want the ratio. I just want to say uh, 100 images fixed for validation, 100 images fixed for. Uh, uh, for uh, testing or let's just say uh, testing 20 images and then let's use 50 images for validation or let's change this number to 35. I'm just changing so <laughs> in the last turn I think we did 50 or 100 images so that doesn't matter. So uh, everything else is the same. Oversample equals to false. Again if one of the in my case both of these uh, folders have 500 images. If you if one is unbalanced compared to the other if you just say oversample equals to true and you still put the same numbers uh, it will oversample for a certain classes. That's pretty much it. Uh, for the underrepresented classes. Okay, so let's go ahead and run this uh, and uh, again 1000 files, but uh, the ratio would be different here. So where is it? Cell images too. If you look at validation, we should have 35 items because that's exactly how many we wanted. And if you look at uh, testing, there should be only 20. Uh, if I can get in, yeah, there is like 20 of these, that's it. And remaining are part of the training right there which is 445 items that's it okay so uh, again uh, i hope you found this to be a useful bit of information uh, i'm not uh, i hope i'm not uh, repeating something you guys uh, already know but again this is one of the questions i get quite a bit from from the viewer so i thought why not just go ahead and cover this we are going to use exactly this in our next video which is going to be about uh, semantic segmentation with large training data sets by not loading everything into the memory because we all have limited memory in our systems anyway okay so thanks again guys please stay tuned for the next video and go ahead and like this video if you like it and subscribe to the channel thank you